Not even rainy skies could dampen our mood today. It's a fine day on the river, girls and boys. Bottom to top, Steve, Sam, and Catherine will join us on the Connecticut Point night of canoe camping. This will be their first experience, and I'm sure not their last. Make a quick stop to check out all the commotion at the speedway. The three amigos continue down the Connecticut River and we detour east of the upper Amanusic River. We would rejoin later in the day with Phoebe secured us a cabin at the six just off the trail. As beautiful as the Amanusic is, it quickly gets tiresome traveling against the current. The first opportunity we get off the river and back on the road where I get my first experience with my new car, it did not disappoint. Ben finds a river tube and has it taken home for future fun. What a special treat this was. I was forced to have my own room with TV. They did all my laundry. They did all the cooking and the dishes. And then, to top it all off, they picked up the tab. Wow. After dinner, I let it be known to Ben and Phoebe that I was planning on leaving early in the morning to get a head start. My previous longest hike after my double knee replacements was just nine miles. I knew there was a possibility that I might be over 20 today, but also that there was bailout options if need be. By the time it was all said and done, I had a total of 27 miles of road portage with no ill effects to my knees, just the rest of my body. Nothing ibuprofen couldn't take care of. Thank goodness for the new cart.
to Stock, New Hampshire, along Northside Road, would prove to be so beautiful and peaceful that thoughts of the long portage never really were entering my mind. So just one foot in front of the other, enjoying the scenery as I went along. Route 110 to West Milan, the shoulder was very wide and the scenery was very beautiful. Now from West Milan to the Andrew Scoggin, well that was another story along Route 110A. That one there was very steep and windy with no shoulder to speak of. I leave a chocolate bar on the edge of the road for my friends, Ben and Phoebe. Once again, I break camp early and head out on the road to Errol's where I pick up my resupply at the post office. We reconnect at the general store to pick up some extra goodies before heading out to Lake Umbagog. Despite being very buggy, Ben makes out well at the bottom of the Rapid River. We start the morning with a brisk five mile portage to Lower Richardson Lake. Okay, this is what one looks like after single portaging Cedar Stump, the unwheelable section. And that's back there. And hopefully the rest of this way up to the Richardsons will be wheelable. This is my setup. How I do the single portage. I strap the, the wheels to the canoe. Put Big Bertha there on my on my back and launch the canoe on top of my shoulders. That thing was tied down and secure. It was tough, but I did it. Ben and Phoebe are doing a double portage. They went back to get that canoe. Gives me a chance to give me a little bit of a breather. Forest Lodge is the former home of Louise Dickinson Rich, author of We Took to the Woods, the best-selling account of her family's experiences living in the Maine backcountry in the 1930s. View of the Rapid River, Class 3-4 Rapids. Remains of the steam tug alligator. At Middle Dam, Lower Richardson Lake, we had to make a decision as to whether we launch into Lower Richardson Lake with increasing winds out of the southeast and visible whitecaps, two, continue another five mile portage to the narrows where we would have some protection from the wind, or three, stay put even though it was midday. We begrudgingly decided to make the steep but wheelable five mile portage 
Not an easy decision, since we had just finished a tough five-mile portage. Phoebe sums up the day perfectly. Little did we know how ominous this day would be. Lake Moose looked McGunthic would soon make things very unpleasant for us. Wind and waves didn't take long to kick up. I yelled out to Ben saying that I was heading for the safety of the islands. He never heard me and wondered where I was going. He and Phoebe continued making the treacherous crossing to the eastern side. I was on the verge of being swamped by large waves and could not do the same. I did all I could to save my boat and myself. Once on the lee side of the islands, I searched for Ben and Phoebe without success. I continued paddling in and out of the safety of the coves in a northerly direction. At one point, I was able to make contact through text. I texted Ben my predicament and intentions. I continued paddling north to where Moose looked for Gunthic Narrow, and the waves subsided enough to make my crossing and rejoin Ben and Phoebe on the other side. We stopped at Farmer's Door in Aquasic for some fresh bread and cheese and the best blueberry pie. Rest for the weary canoe traveler. A short window of opportunity to cross Benchley Lake. At the halfway Hilton, Lean to and Rangeley, Ben and Phoebe hike in the dock to watch the Celtics playoff game while I hold the fort. Route 16 from Rangeley to Stratton would be by far the most treacherous road portage of them all. It started off okay with dry roads and wildflowers along its edges. But once the rain started, it turned ugly with all the road grind being kicked up by 18 wheelers making for poor visibility. Knowing that we had accommodations to look forward to at the main roadhouse hostel made it a bit more bearable. Good, how are you? Good. Yeah, Northern Forest Canoe Trail.
this building never looked so good. Main roadhouse, rooms and bunkhouse, we stand here for the night. I can smell the fire burning, the lights are on, and it's warm and cozy. Oh my, my, my. I am here at last. Oh, that wood smoke never smelled so good. Hike is welcome. That includes canoes. And canoes with hike. Fantastic. Oh my. BB Science Hour Roadhouse Wall Photo. Johnny Rocket and the Grandkids. There, so there might be one. I know there's a sign over there. Yeah. No, okay, don't worry about it. I know there's a sign there, but that doesn't mean there's a kiosk to sign in. Yeah. Yeah, there's one at the end over here. Come on, folks. All right. Cool. I guess we can uh, see the lake. to unfavorable lake conditions, we make a short paddle to boom campsite and call it a day. Coming through. Did you get the big one yet? Good luck. 
We continued down the meandering Dead River, just above Grand Falls. We would camp at Island of the Giants campsite, a relatively new NFCT site. We found it to be a haven for mosquitoes with many ticks on this mid-June day. Poor Phoebe must have walked into a tick nest for she had up to a dozen ticks on her. The infamous Spencer Stream Portage is one of those portages that haunt you prior to your trip. There's really no way around it. You just have to bear down and push through the five and a half miles of upstream travel that are laced with class one and two rapids. The rocks are round and slippery, so good sturdy shoes are a must. I also brought along a set of nano spikes on the advice of former through paddlers. I don't know what the optimum water levels are for this portage. All levels present differing challenges. For me personally and my Kevlar boat, the higher stream water levels lessen the damage to the bottom of my boat. With that being said, by the end of the day at Fish Pond, I noticed I was taking on water from a hole in the stern of my canoe. At camp, I did a temporary field repair with some thick waterproof tape that I brought along. This hole would require my attention for the remainder of the trip and a permanent repair when I got home with skid plates. So this must be the class two they're talking about. What? Now this should be all cream pie. <laughs> That's not such a good analogy. All I can say is I'm thankful for these nano spikes. They're not only giving you better grip, but they're also keeping my shoes together, which are falling apart. Looks like that's the last stretch. <clears throat> it was tough for quite a while. <clears throat> I think. I'm pretty sure this is it.
Okay, so that was a Spencer. That was just a, a dead water between rapids. I guess there's two or three of these. Haven't looked. Haven't. I don't have the this map section. It's in my next free supply. And I really have a check because I really don't want to know if I'll get there when I freaking get there. It is what it is. The less I know the better. I just know I gotta keep on going. Pick me a line. Bucket. What a bitch. My poor boat. Needed and deserved fuel for the belly.